this video is proudly supported by Glasswire. For more information, check the link below. What's up guys, CP Modder here, back with another video. When it comes to Sufast NVMe drives, there are a few companies that can actually beat Samsung. But Samsung has taken it upon themselves to go ahead and beat themselves, and they've released the 970 series of SSDs. Some of the world's fastest consumer drives, and today we're going to take a look at the Pro and also to the Evo. Absolutely blazing fast SSDs that absolutely blew me away. Now recently we've checked out these drives in a massive NVMe. VME showdown so you can find that video linked up there or down in that description box where we went ahead and picked these guys up a lot of other SSD drives so if you are in the market for a brand new NVMe drive you may want to check that video out. Now yes these particular drives are completely brand new and I've only been on the market for about five days now at the time of recording but they are already crushing systems out there and making some pretty sweet headlines and I knew when I got my hands on it for that video I totally had to do a quick video just taking a look at what these drives can offer. So let's go ahead and take that look at these particular drives. So take a look on the visual side, Samsung has well stuck with their basics with their black and stealth kind of design, only really accented by either the orange or red logo depending on which model you get. But man that 970 Pro is on point with that red accent, I really do like it, really nice. And the overall design again is pretty nice here. But the rest of it is, well again, pretty much similar. Sure it's a really nice design, but they haven't really changed much from their previous generation, which actually might be a good thing. With more and more boards supporting M.2 drives without necessarily having a heatsink, having a drive that doesn't look terrible is definitely something that a lot of people are actually looking at. Sure, you can go ahead and save a bit of money and grab a green PCB drive, but it's not really going to look as nice at these particular drives. Taking a closer look, however, Samsung has provided this cool little image telling us exactly what on earth all these things are. With our controller over here, RAM over here, and storage chip, it kind of is a little bit logical and definitely makes a bit of sense. Now in terms of actually the specs in here, Samsung has paired up these drives with their VNAND which is their 64 layer 3D MLC VNAND for the Pro editions and for the regular, I guess regular Evo editions, we're looking at 3D TLC memory chips on this guy. Either way, they're definitely going to be very high performance chips and definitely do a good job here. Now depending on which model you get, these chips will either be 256 gigabyte configurations or 5 512 gigabyte chips. These guys are all paired up with their brand new Phoenix controller and up to one gigabyte of LPDDR4 RAM for the one terabyte models and up to two gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM for the two terabyte options. Now, you may be thinking, hang on a second, why on earth is there RAM on an SSD. Well, essentially these are for caching and quick sequential performances. So when you're hitting the drives, it may go into the RAM for a little bit while it's writing things out to keep performance on point. And two gigabytes is definitely a really nice little size there. If you want a larger size range this year, we do have the Evos offering the sizes. Whereas if you want max speed, the Pro is where it's at. With Evo offering 250 gigabytes all the way through to two terabytes and the Pro offering 512 up to one terabyte. It's a bit of a shame that the Pro with its faster speed doesn't have more options, but let's face it, the slower drives are still very, very fast at that. Other cool specs to note is the actual write endurance of these drives are really high with up to 1,200 terabytes of write endurance. This is something we've not really seen too much before and only Samsung has come close. This is absolutely incredible, 1,200 terabytes write endurance. Again, something we don't see every day and I've been absolutely absolutely blown away when I saw that spec on paper. Now whilst this all sounds really cool, cool write endurance, good performance, good SSD, all that kind of stuff, in terms of comparing to last gen, it isn't really that much different. We'll get to the actual test in just a moment, but honestly on paper, it isn't too far from the older 960. Oh, and I guess also too, a couple more things to note is that controller is actually sitting under a nickel coated heat spreader. So when you do go ahead and hit this guy hard and it starts to warm up, that nickel coated heat spreader should do a little bit better at dissipating some of the heat, but always recommended to throw yourself a heat spreader over the top of it. And finally, it is paired up with a sweet five year warranty. But enough looking at shots of the drive, enough looking at specs and papers and all that kind of stuff. Well, let's go ahead and see how it actually performs. Jumping into our synthetics, my gosh, I was blown away with just how awesome this guy is. Looking at graph, even compared to last generation, this thing is absolutely fast. 
when the benchmarks actually finished and I saw that there was over three gigabytes per second registered up on the screen, I was absolutely blown away. I was basically speechless to see that much speed in an SSD drive without any RAID or functionality like that, just on a single drive. Absolutely crazy. With the previous best under three gigabytes per second, it was really cool to see this number up on the screen. But moving into our gaming and load times right here, we see that even though the drives are much faster than other SSDs, they're not exactly seeing the biggest gap as we would expect from other SSDs. This is most likely down to the fact that games are finding other bottlenecks and waiting for other things to process rather than just the SSD itself. Sure, if you compare the 970 Pro to something like a mechanical hard drive, you will definitely see a big difference, but when you compare it to other NVMe drives, it's really not too much of a difference right here, but overall, still a very compelling SSD. Also too, FPS were definitely not affected, and for those wondering, there was no frame loss, stuttering, or anything like that. Sure, a drive doesn't make any effect on that, but for those wondering, this is why we do those tests because well, some people do wonder out there but I can definitely report no actual performance loss, stuttering or anything like that when you do jump into a game. Getting into real world tests, they were also too definitely on point. Boot times were absolutely insane and if we do go ahead and borrow the graph that we did make for our NVMe SSD showdown, Damn, those numbers are actually really cool. And jumping into some pro applications, whilst I wasn't able to actually measure this, when I played back 4K raw video on the system, usually my computer kind of maxes out and the drive is a bit of a bottleneck as I do run standard SATA drives. But throwing these guys in, they were really nice to see. And whilst it wasn't exactly butter smooth playback as it is 4K raw video, at the end of the day, the video was way better played back on these fast SSD drives. But what does that mean for you, the viewer? Well, if you go ahead and have large files to move around, large video files to view, or something along those lines, you shouldn't have too many stutters or drop frames, thanks to the fact that these read and write speeds are absolutely through the roof. So pro apps definitely did appreciate this speed and bandwidth that these drives can deliver. And I guess also too, the entire system did definitely respond very well to the fast and snappy drive. Sure, you can't exactly measure it, but just opening up files and moving around the operating system, everything was snappy and super on point, and I would expect this to be super Super fast and snappy for the entire life of this particular drive. So all in all, Samsung has done a really impressive job with their brand new SSD. Sure, it's just an increment rather than a massive leap over the last generation, but in terms of hardware, they're definitely up on the top spec right here. With impressive real world performance and also to synthetics, there's very few other companies on the market offering competitive specs right here. However, they are starting to catch up and Samsung may be losing a little bit of their specialness with their drives. As a lot of other manufacturers start to offer high performance drives without the high end price tag. And speaking of that price tag, for about 90 Australian cents per gigabyte, this guy is definitely not the world's most cheapest drive, but at the same time, it is still nice to see that they are getting cheaper and cheaper for larger capacities out there. But that being said, let me know down in that comment section what SSD do you run in your system and would you chuck it out for one of these awesome new Samsung drives? Let me know down below. Otherwise, if you want to pick up one of them, you can find them in the that description box and if you again want to check out that NVMe showdown again all in that description box thanks all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one